Senator, for chairing the, the hearing today, and, and I apologize again for the timing of the votes uh, on this. I know a number of questions have been asked uh, about uh, the priorities of fixing this broken tax code, of lowering our rates, becoming more competitive, and I believe, too, you know, our ability to, to uh, rapidly recover our, our capital, uh, reinvest it uh, you know, back into these uh, investments, uh, continue to be a strong part of our tax reform. Since that's already been explored quite a while, why ways, Mr. Cuddle, let me ask you, I have a question to you about the Fed policy and a question from Dr. Bernstein about regulation. Um, Mr. Cudlow, uh, Federal Reserve plays an important po role in uh, laying the economic foundation for uh, any country. The, um, the Fed often tries to do, in my view, too much. Uh, and in fact, their tools can only boost employment in the short term. In the long term, their tools are, are best used addressing inflation and deflation, uh, which create, I think, a strong foundation for economic growth. Looking at the last five years uh, since the recovery began, looking forward, your advice on the best monetary policy that would allow us to close that growth gap, uh, frankly, and uh, create a better foundation for economic growth? All I ask from the Fed is that uh, prices are stable, inflation is as low as possible, and the currency is strong and reliable. That's all I ask. Um, I go back 50 years ago in 1968 in his presidential address to the Economics Association, American Economic Association, Milton Friedman gave this talk. <laughs> and I encourage everyone to read it. Um, it's one of the reasons he got a Nobel Prize. And you talk about limits, you are right. Monetary policy has no lasting impact on employment, on investment, on all the real variables. Monetary policy has direct long-term impact on inflation and uh, hence interest rates and the exchange rate. So uh, I come out in favor of rules. I'm a rules-based guy. I like to have fiscal rules. I like to have monetary rules. And I would just offer two suggestions. Number one, the Taylor rule. Um, which I think would be quite useful, and uh, was used predominantly, predominantly central banks all around the world used the Taylor Rule in the 80s and 90s. It wasn't just us. By the 90s, that was, that was basically the, the view. And as you know, that is a formula that um, combines potential GDP and inflation. I would also, however, Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I, I'd like forward indicators, forward indicators. That's why I'm a stickler for using so-called market price rules. I think central bankers ought to keep an eye on gold, they ought to keep an eye on commodities, they ought to keep an eye on the treasury yield curve, and they ought to keep an eye on the exchange rate. Those are pretty good forward indicators. Um, probably none of them alone is perfect. You use four of them, you pretty much cover the, uh, uh, the ground. So that's where I would go. Other thing is, <laughs> as I said on fiscal policy, I'm, I don't think the federal stimulus, the federal spending stimulus works. I don't believe there were multipliers. Same with the Federal Reserve. They bought over $3 trillion worth of paper. The money multiplier broke. The difference between the monetary base and the money supply collapsed. The multiplier collapsed. And by the way, so did the turnover of velocity of money. The money supply itself hadn't changed in five years. The good news is there's no inflation. The good news is there's no inflation. The bad news is the Fed has embarked on this um, you know, vast journey that they're now going to spend the next five years trying to get out of. Um, I also believe it's a huge mistake. I'll end on this point. I, with all due respect to Ms. Yellen, who was very, very smart, this business of using a group of labor indicators to conduct monetary policy is dead wrong. It's a reversion back to the old Phillips curve trade-off, which I think has no validity. Uh, her, her dashboard of indicators, I think, is just absolutely the wrong way to go. We are told um, often in this hearing room, don't worry about inflation. Uh, it isn't here. It won't occur. This ought, we, we need to focus on getting people back to work. Uh, but inflation isn't always so clear and can take root long before uh, the Fed, frankly, uh, can identify in the Fed frankly, is honest about its limits there. For the sake of caution, should the Fed begin 
now or soon normalizing interest rates, to begin working off, not, not over a decade, but begin normalizing its policy sooner rather than later, do you think that can be achieved without a negative impact on the, the economic growth going forward? Well, hope springs eternal. Hope springs eternal. Um, I, I think the answer is theoretically yes, you can do it. And I think what they want to do is just my take. They're going to let the bond portfolio basically run off. There's not going to be massive selling of bonds. And given the situation they're in, I basically agree with that. All right. I grew up as a Fed guy, and I was a Fed watcher, and I was a bond economist. If I owned $4 trillion worth of paper, I, I'd let it run off to it. If they keep selling into the market, that's going to be really, really tough. Um, other ideas they have, I, I don't know, sir. Um, paying interest on reserves, we don't have a lot of experience on that. Um, manipulating the so-called reverse RP market, the match we used to call match sale purchases, basically means the private sector loans money to the Fed at a certain rate. We'll have to see. Yes, let's start normalizing. The Taylor rule right now, just as a reference point, the Taylor rule right now would have the Fed funds rate at not less than 1.5%, possibly higher. All right, I, I wouldn't do it tomorrow, but I would pave the way. And what troubles me a little bit, and I, from what I caught a glimpse of Ms. Yellen's testimony this morning, um, I don't think the Fed is paving the way. I think their forward guidance is murky, murky, murky. and um, one of the really good things here is the stock market has done very well. And a lot of people that say the only people that benefit is the top 1%. I want to disagree with that. I want to remind everybody, if I may, roughly 50% of American households, one way or another, are invested in the stock market. And that means pension funds. And that means school teachers and cops and firemen and women, okay, as well as millionaires. All right. And let's not blow up. Let's try hard not to blow up the stock market. Let's really try hard. It's, as I think Jared said, or somebody said, it's contributed to a lot of gains in household wealth. And the distribution's not bad. And um, I want those pension funds to heal. Otherwise, the states are all going to go bankrupt. So my point is, I'd like to see the Fed start paving the way. And they're not. Thank you, Mr. Cudlow.